Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and today I thought I would go about teaching you Viticulture Solo, and this is Viticulture Essential Edition. When you are playing Viticulture Essential Edition, you probably need to start by deciding on your difficulty level, and the reason I say that is because there are a few difficulty level differences based on uh, or setup differences based on your difficulty level. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. The very first difficulty level is very easy. And basically that will add an extra year. In Viticulture Essential Edition Solo, you are basically racing against the clock. It's whoever is doing the best after uh, seven years. And in this case, you get an eighth year. So basically one extra year to get the jump on the Atoma. In easy mode, you're actually going to go ahead and start with three points right off the bat. So that is going to certainly help you beat the Automa at their own game. Normal mode is uh, a typical setup, and I'll show you that here in just a second. You're going to start at start, and the Automa, because they're, you know, they're the person to beat, they're already at the end. The next option we have is hard. This has no differences in setup. It does affect how you play the game, and I will address that when we get to discussing the Atoma cards. And the same goes for Very Hard, because Very Hard, you use the combination of Hard Mode, and Very Hard means that instead of setting up your end token for the Atoma at 20, you do it over here at 23. So you have to be beyond 23 after seven years. That is the only reason you really need to decide on difficulty level right up front. So you're either going to start yourself on three or you're going to start the Atoma on 23. Otherwise, you can get right into it. We are going to go ahead and set up the game pretty much like we would normally. So we're going to go ahead and have our vineyard. Uh, just like this, we have all of our pieces. These are supposed to be the little glass beads. Now, Tabletopia has um, these little tokens that kind of look like the grapes, but I would imagine that glass effect is a little difficult. So here's all of our pieces. Um, we are going to set up like usual in terms of you know the mamas and the papas, but we're gonna we're gonna choose our player. In this case, we start with blue, and Atoma starts with orange. We're going to place one glass token on each one of these wake-up rows. Now, again, these are orange because that's what the Atoma is, but these in your board game box are going to be those clear grape tokens, and you're going to put one on each of the years here. And if you are playing on that very easy difficulty, you're going to have one extra right here. Um, the next thing you're going to do is shuffle up the Automa deck over here, and you're going to remove, well, let me just put it this way. The instructions say to go ahead and remove any visitor cards that, that indicate that they, that, you, that they only get a benefit if another player, if you only get a benefit if another player takes an action. You don't want to play with those, so I would just say if you encounter any of those while you're playing, just go ahead and remove them. Ignore them. It's fine. Setup is going to be exactly the same, except for the Atoma is going to have their little pieces over here. You're going to have the tokens here along the edge. Otherwise, it is set up just like any other game of vi uh, Viticulture. We'll go ahead and take our benefits now from our Mama and Papa, uh, Mama and Nicole. Already, we have our two workers already on the mat here, and we're going to go ahead and take two coins. We need a vine and a winter visitor, and Papa Raymond here is going to give us our grande worker, which is already here, and our choice of a cottage or three coins. So for simplicity here, I'll just take a five, and then we'll grab a vine card here and a winter visitor. And do we want another three coins or do we want that cottage? Well, in Viticulture, those visitor cards are pretty important. I couldn't really tell you whether or not they're super important for the, you know, for the, for beating that Automa. So let's go ahead and take the cottage um, just because to get ourselves some extra, you know, 
visitors. We'll go ahead and take that. We don't, we don't need the money right now. And uh, hopefully we won't. So that is the setup. Let's go ahead and talk about the goal. The goal, as I mentioned, is at the end of seven years or eight years, you basically just want to be ahead of the Atoma here. Over the course of seven years, you got to beat 20 points. Gameplay, that takes care of gameplay. Let's talk about this wake up chart. What are these little glass beads or these grapes that are here on the wake up chart? When you are playing Viticulture, you are going to take your little rooster and you are going to decide what bonus or what benefit you want. So let's say right off the gate, um, you know, probably would probably go for the, the worker, but maybe you're not ready for that yet. Um, maybe I don't know what I'm doing, but I'd go here maybe. And I'm going to take this little bead and I'm going to go ahead and, and just put it by my board somewhere. Um, and we're going to take our one victory point And, you know, you go ahead and collect that bonus, whatever it is. And the next time, and you're, you're going to go ahead and play out the year like you usually would. Now... I'll get to what that means with the Autoba here in just a second, but basically I just want to explain this wake up chart. At the beginning of the next year, when you go to choose where you're starting, you can no longer choose this sixth year. That marks that year is already gone. So maybe this next time you're going to go ahead and take a vine card and you're going to take this uh, token again. Uh, and I will explain what these tokens are good for here in just a second but i'll just go ahead and set these here we'll say we've already played a couple years why not um and so that's what the wake up chart is for it's a way of keeping track and those glass beads disappearing is a way of keeping track of how many rounds you've already played now let's talk about now let's go ahead and talk about these bonus action tokens um and that's what these glass beads are and what we've set aside here on our next to our our vineyard here these are bonus Bonus action tokens, and I'm just going to move these up here for simplicity. Um, yeah, so when we are placing our workers, I should have grabbed one of our workers. So when we are placing our workers on the board here, and let's say we were wanting to give a tour, we're going to ignore the order of operation here for just a second. I, we only, because it's a two-player game, we're only using these far left spaces. So, you know, this one, and that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. Basically, all of the spaces that do not give us a bonus. This is just, you, you know, putting these things in place, and when we get, you know, what the action is. Give a tour to gain $2 to Lyra. Uh, build a structure. Draw a vine card. But what these tokens do is these allow us, so we spend them. Once we use them, we're, they're gone. If I was to give this tour and gain two, I could go ahead and say, I'm going to go ahead and use this bonus token and you know, just discard it somewhere. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take that bonus. So then I would give myself a coin. Or if I was over here and, and selling some grapes um, and I wanted to spend this bonus action token, I'd go ahead and, and give myself that victory point. And so that's what these are. These are opportunities for us to gain the bonuses that we otherwise wouldn't gain in a two player game. So whether we want to gain, uh, you know, Lyra here or a vi an extra vine card or to plant an extra vine card, um, whether we want to draw an extra vine card or play a extra uh, visitor in the, the summer. Or, uh, you know, whether we want to draw some wine orders. So basically, these bonuses that would otherwise be unavailable to us um, are available. So maybe that's your strategy is you want to go ahead and use these victory point spaces. Um, cool. That's that's one way to go about it, certainly. So that's what those bonus action tokens do. Let's go ahead and talk about these uh, Toma cards. At the beginning of each season where you are to place workers, you're first going to draw an Atoma card, and then you're going to place either 0, 1, 2, or 3 Atoma workers on the action spaces on the board in the current season. I'll show you what that means here in just a second, but let's go ahead and flip over one of these cards. We are going to pretend like it is a, a time to place workers, and you know what? Let's go ahead and look at what that means. Here in the summer, we have worker placement, and here in the winter, we have worker placement. In terms of this first card, we're placing summer workers. 
we're only looking at this green and yellow part of the card. And so what we would do in this particular instance here is we would place one of the, and, and the Atoma has all of their cards, they're playing blockers. So they're going to go ahead and on their turn, they're going to go ahead and put a worker there in draw a card, and they're going to put a worker in play, or I'm sorry, in uh, play a spring visitor card. So basically, if we are not wanting to use our grande worker, those two spots are unavailable to us. So in this case, we would only play those two. Now you may be wondering, why are we not playing this? Well, you see this T right here means that this Automa card is uh, applies to the Tuscany expansion. So if you look on this board, there is no option to buy or sell one field, um, nor is there an option to build one structure or give a tour to gain two. We have variations of that. So here we see buy and sell one field. Well, here in the Essential Edition Board of Viticulture, we have sell at least one grape or buy and sell one field. Well, this is a, a separate option uh, on Tuscany all by itself. So when we're playing Essential Edition, we basically ignore these options that have the T on it. In this particular case, uh, this would be the first card we drew. We block those spaces from us, and then we would go ahead and take our, our summer uh, worker placement turn. So we would decide, you know, if we want to do play, you know, worker, and uh, in this case, we'll go ahead and, you know, I had a guy here on sell at least one grape. So it was, it would be at this point where then I would go, well, you know, I wanted to do this, but I can't, I can use my grande worker if I want to, but I'm not going to, you know, maybe I'll go ahead and uh, just, you know, give a tour, or maybe I'm going to hold on to all of my workers until, um, the next season, maybe just two seasons in, it's what I'm pretending we've done here. Uh, it's not too important to me, but whatever case, I'll go ahead and place my workers. So, you know what, for the sake of this, we'll just go ahead and said I, uh, or say I, we'll say I gave a tour and gained some money. I'm not actually going to move the money over, but we'll say that was my turn. Uh, we move on to fall and I would draw a visitor card. And maybe I would go ahead and take one of these. Uh, we'll just move that to my hand here. Uh, maybe I would take one of these. And then let's see here. And then because I have the cottage, remember, I would go ahead and I'll go ahead and take one of these too. Because why not? Why not? I'm going to move these off here. Move them into my hand and then I'll hide them. Okay, so that would be our, you know, gaining our, our visitors. And now we've moved into the winter phase. And so now I'm going to go ahead and play another card here. And the Automa is going to cover up the build one structure. Or I'm sorry, we're playing in the winter. Geez, if I'm teaching you how to play it, I should at least teach you right, correct? Um, so because we're in the winter season, now we're going to go ahead and play these red and blue spaces. Now, this red one is a Tuscany only, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, we are just going to play these these two bottom, which is in the winter, they're going to block the, the play a winter visitor car, card up there or take that spot. And they're also going to cover up the fill a wine order. They are blocking us out of those, and now we have some decisions to make. That is how the Atoma cards work. After I put, placed my workers and the Atoma has already placed theirs, um, we're at year end, and the Atoma does not need to place all of their workers. Um, they may very well end up doing that, um, just naturally do these cards, or if you're playing on hard or very hard, um, you know what, let's go ahead and talk about uh, had you chose the hard difficulty, because the way the hard difficulty works is, let's say we are in the, let's go ahead and I'll move these workers off just so you have a real good idea of how this works. We are going to say for the sake of argument here that we are in the spring, and so I'm going to draw a card, and this has three 
um, of the spring season options here. Um, give a tour, build a structure. In the very hard, or sorry, in the hard difficulty, and in the very hard, you are going to keep drawing Automa cards and placing workers until the Automa has placed at least two workers in the current season. So the current season would be this green and yellow season for the spring. So we would get our two uh, in very easily. In this case, we would put this out here for, you know, gain a tour to, to do two, but we are going to go ahead and place uh, under other circumstances here. Let's go ahead and flip this one over. We'll use this as an example because we are playing uh, Tuscan. We are not playing Tuscan here. So build one structure. So we would go ahead and cover build one structure here. And there's no other action to take. So we're also uh, we need to keep adding Automa to the board until we fill this card. So we put one on build one structure. We're even going to cover up the, the fall one with draw a, a wine order card here and fill a wine order card. And then we're going to draw the next card until we have two in the current season. Now, this would go ahead and accommodate that tour to give two, uh, give a tour to gain two. Um, my guy shouldn't actually be here for this example, so he would go there. That would satisfy that. Now this would end once we uh, got two out or until the Automa has placed all six of their workers. And that is what you do in the hard and very hard difficulty. Let's go ahead and talk about what happens at year end. Year end is, is pretty much going to go exactly like it does in the regular game of viticulture, except for, you know, instead of just taking your own stuff back, you're also going to retrieve all the Atoma workers for the board. In a typical year end of viticulture, you know, you're going to go ahead ahead and age your grapes and so let's go ahead and age the grapes and you're going to age your wine that's in your cellar you're also going to return your workers and so in this case remember we have to um, give the automa back their people so we're going to clear them off the board just as we would our own uh, basically that's just uh a little bit of you know housekeeping that you have to take care of because the automa won't do it themselves you know so that is you know you're going to return your workers uh you're going to collect any you know payments that you would for wine orders that you had you know orders that are already filled you're going to discard down to seven cards and you're not really going to rotate the first player marker because the Atoma always gets to play blocker. Then you are going to do it again. So we're going to pretend like we just finished our, our first year here at our vineyard. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board here. We'll say, uh, what did we say? We said we went ahead and, and took, it doesn't matter. So this was, we'll say that was the one we had taken this last time. So we can't choose two for, you know, choosing our, our when we start. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll choose, you know, seven this time so we get that extra worker and we'll keep that to ourselves so that we have a, a bonus token and then we would play it again. We'll go ahead and because we chose our work or our uh, wake up position, we are in the summer. Let's see what the Automa is going to do. They are going to give a tour to gain two coins that are blocking us out of here and because we're in the spring or in the summer i mean we are doing the green and the yellow they are also covering up the sell at least one grape or buy and sell one field and really that's how this goes we are going to keep choosing wake up positions placing our workers placing or placing automa's workers then placing our workers and whether or not we use these bonus action tokens and then we're going to get around to the fall you're going to draw your visitor card whether you want spring or winter um and then you are going to again draw another automa card and it is going to block you again here on these red and blue ones that don't have the tuscany flag right now because we're not playing tuscany and this just goes until you've taken all of these beads off and once you have taken these all off it's game 
end and hopefully here I, I uh, we're gonna reset it I forgot to move this down hopefully by the end of the game you are ahead of the Atoma and you win game ends in viticulture solo uh, for the essential edition and in a win a lose or a draw you can draw there is a no tiebreaker for viticulture it's just a draw for the solo mode so uh, you want to be ahead of the viticulture Atoma and that is game end now i do want to talk to you real quick about a couple of uh options that are brought up in the instruction booklet there is also a a campaign mode for the solo mode and it's it's basically you play the game in campaign mode you have eight different challenges and you must beat the automa into each one of them uh, to complete the campaign and so each time you lose you restart the same challenge so you might play you know the first one and, and win you might play the second one and win you might take two or three times to beat the third challenge and the at the end of the campaign of these eight games and obviously this is something you probably want to do over some time unless you just have a lot of time on your hands that's fine too um <laughs> but basically uh your score is the number of games that took you to complete the campaign so obviously lower is better your lowest score is going to be an eight but um can you score an eight or is it going to be a 12 is it going to be a 15 how many games is it going to take you to beat all of these challenges um just uh i won't read all of them out but like some of the challenges are the first one is you don't get a mama card instead select any three vine cards and plant them as part of the setup you can ignore the structure requirements of these three and then reshuffle the vine deck after you made your choice that's an awesome one um year five is you can't use any bonus action tokens and play eight years where each year you can choose any wake up chart row that you want so that's going to be a little bit different um you don't get those bonus action tokens which are very helpful but that's that challenge and then one of the, the seventh challenge for example is start at uh negative three victory points and uh two recurring income so it's a, it's a nice little variety that's the campaign mode for the solo mode and then finally this one would just give me anxiety and that is the aggressive variant and i will show you how this aggressive variant works you and the automa um i'm not gonna say you start head and head the automa starts at negative one okay so in year one and you have to imagine all these are in place in year one the automa starts at negative one point and you have to stay ahead of the automa every single year or if you don't you lose uh immediately so you could lose the game halfway through you could lose the game in two years or even in six years but how this works is at the end of year one this automa is going to be at negative one so you should you should make it out of the first year um all right but the second year the automa is going to move on to zero and so you have to be ahead of the automa there in year three it's gonna give itself three victory points in year four it is at four victory points at year five it is at eight victory points and at six it is at 13 and then at seven it is 20. so you have to stay ahead of the automa every year and i gotta tell you that like i said that would just be too much stress for me to know that i've got to be banking these victory points uh year in and year out i mean despite the fact that you're supposed to be doing that anyway it would just be a lot so yeah i hope i hope this uh was helpful i i know i elaborated on uh some of the points a little bit much but i'd rather you have a little bit too much information than than not enough but as usual if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments um i will uh, one day uh show off the the tuscany solo mode too but i mean you get a, a really good idea here of, of how that works too is is you're just going to be using these uh these t flags too but i really like the solo mode for the automa for viticulture because it's so easy to run it's because it's just blocking you 
Um, it can, it, it's one of those where it's like, if it, if it puts the automa in a place, if it puts a worker in a place that you weren't going to go, you, you feel like, whew, I dodged a bullet with that one. And if it puts one where you're going, it's that, that nice kind of pain of going, oh, do I want to use my grande worker? And it's especially, especially hard choice to make if you're in the, in the summer when it happens and you go, oh, but what if I need to use it in the winter? Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I, I really enjoy the Automa for Viticulture. It's one of the, the few, uh, Automa that I think is, is just so easy that, that I will, I won't think twice about using it. It's, it's a good substitute for an extra player and, you know, that's it. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I will answer them just as soon as I can. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. I'll talk to you later.